Hi guys, it's Sophie. So I wanted to do a little July book haul. Um, I went to Bath to get my wedding dress fitted and I only had one book left on my TBR. So I decided to replenish my TBR um, while I was out, which was quite an expensive um, trip out, but it was really good fun. Um, I filmed just a few clips and I'll kind of pop them in as we go. Um, I didn't vlog the whole thing just because the day ended up being a little bit more like busy than maybe I thought it was going to be and um, yeah it just kind of didn't fit as well as a vlog so I thought it would but we'll put a little bit so that you can kind of see what I was doing. Obviously the wedding dress isn't in there. Um, so one of the really exciting things to share is that Persephone Books moved to Bath um, which is really fun for me because it's like very cl well not very close but it's like much closer um, to go there than it is to go to London. Um, I actually never bought a book from them before, believe it or not. I have been a few times um, when it was in London and I was like let's go show them some support um, and the one I got is called Still Missing by Beth Gutchion. Um This is one that I think was published in the 80s so it's not as old as some of the other books um, that they published. Let me just fact check myself. Yeah so it was published in the 80s. This is a mystery slash throwy type book about a woman whose son goes missing um, and I'm excited to try them for the first time. I've seen lots of people read some Persephone books and like some and not like others and I've just never tried one. Um, normally because classics is not something I read a lot of and I thought this one being a bit more modern um, might be more up my street um, so we'll see what I think of that one. Then I just bought two other fiction books. Um, I'm trying to go heavy on the non-fiction at the minute. I just spoke about that when I did my mid-year wrap-up that I really wanted to read more non-fiction. I think I'd read 40% non-fiction-ish um, and so I want to try and read 60% for the remaining half of this year um, so that I even myself out and I definitely hear more about fiction on the bookish kind of internet than I do non-fiction so it's really good fun choosing some non-fiction. Um, but the two fiction I have is this one which is People Like Them by Samira Cedra um, and this is one I'd never heard of it was on a Waterstones best in translation display um, and this looks at the interaction between two families one is called the Griets, Gri Griot, I don't know they're French and the Langlois family um, they're very different but they live in this fairly like isolated community and have a falling out of some of some sorts um, it kind of reminded me of, yeah, it's got a quote from Lila Slamani on the back um, of that kind of like French thriller. Uh, and I was, I was up for it, I haven't read a lot in translation this year and it looks quite short as well. It looks like quite a pacey little one. We've got a week off this week, which will be really nice. So I'm hoping to get through quite a lot of these quite quick. Then the next one I have is Come Join Our Disease by Sam Byers. And this person is the author of Perfidious Albion, which I saw a few people like really enjoy last year. and. I did, just didn't go there but I'll see how I feel about this one because if I like this one I'll go back. Um, but this looks at a woman who is homeless and she is told that they will pull her out of homelessness if she will record everything that's happening on Instagram. It's supposed to be like a rag to riches anyone can get anywhere type of a journey um, and she is kind of begins to rebel against like this wellness industry that's pulling her in as this example like anyone can be perfect. Um, so I think that sounded quite interesting. I think the cover is really really good. really enjoy that cover. It's very unsettling but looks really nice at a distance. Um, yeah so that's my last fiction book. And then I've got six non-fictions. Uh, the first I got was The Fifth Risk by Michael Lewis, um, having enjoyed his writing in The Premonition. Um, I wanted to try another book, I know he mostly writes about markets and politics, um, but The Fifth Risk is one he spoke about in The Premonition and I think it's about America and Trump. And I think I know enough that it feels like an easy enough introduction um, to different types of his writing. Um, but yeah, we'll see what I think as to whether or not I go back um, to his kind of earlier books and I'm surprised I haven't read any of them. Like. I, like The Flash Boys, The Big Short and um, Moneyball are all ones I've heard of but I've never read any of them. I think I maybe thought they were a bit too blokey. Um, but the other thing is I have been reading a lot of women the last few years and that kind of means I'm like oh it's kind of if you find a few writers that you like in the non-fiction genre that expand your eyes in a different view you'll be equaling out your, your male female split a little bit. So that is The Fifth Risk. Then I got Rachel Cusk's Aftermath which is looking at the, um, I think it's a year period it looks at. Yeah, I think so. 
um, where she's looking at the kind of after effect of her divorce and sort of navigating motherhood on her own. Um, I'm really enjoying Rachel Cusk. I've read, oh, I think I read Outline. How many of hers have I read? Yeah, I've definitely read Outline. I've read um, The Second Place, but I don't think I've read any of her nonfiction yet. So we'll see what I think. I'm pretty sure I haven't read any of her nonfiction yet, um, but yeah, just more of her bringing into my life, getting used to her. She's she's a little bit spiky. I find her a little bit um, difficult to access sometimes. Then I've got two books by the same author, um, who is Susie Orchbatch. Orchbatch. Uh, the first is In Therapy, um, which looks. She's a psychotherapist, so she was in psychotherapy for 40 years, and in this book she's talking about what happens in therapy. I've had a lot of therapy but I'm interested to see like what the view is from the um, the therapist, um, the, what their view is and also how therapy might be undertaken differently dependent on what the patient needs. Um, I've never read anything about therapy specifically so I thought this one could be quite interesting. And then the next one that I picked up was Bodies um, which looks at the ways in which our bodies are becoming commodified um, again by kind of like the wellness industry um, and by plastic surgery and eating disorders. Um, I've never read, as I said, I've never read her before, um, so we'll see what I think, um, but there were two that kind of sounded interesting and I thought sometimes it's nice to have a few books by the same author to kind of see what you think of them. Then I got the new Olivia Lang, um, which is signed. There we go. Um, and this is Everybody, this is another book about bodies um, with a slightly different tilt. So she is looking at um, Apparently she uses the life of the renegade psychoanalyst William Reich to, to chart a daring course through the long struggle for bodily freedom from gay rights, to sexual liberation, to feminism and the civil rights movement. So this is less about bodies and health, I think, and more about control of bodies. Um, Olivia Lang is someone that I've enjoyed reading before and I didn't know there was another one out, so I'll look forward to reading this one. And then the last one I have to haul today is one of my favourite covers I've seen in a while. It is Golem Girl. Um, by River Le Lesher, I think. Um, this looks like a woman who has, let me just remember, spina bifida. Um, and she is in the kind of medicalised community that she's told that she won't achieve things, she's told that she needs to be kind of a good patient, um, and she fits into that role as well as she can, but later in her life she finds a way towards kind of disability culture and ch challenging the views that the medical community has put onto her about her own illness um, and I think when I spoke about care work in my last video I think this is maybe some of what I'm missing this conversation about disability culture so I think this one will be really interesting too. So those are all the books that I've hauled um, in July so far that is also my entire TBR um, so that's kind of exciting um, I yeah as I say I've got a week off I'm hoping I'll read sort of four or five books in that time so that'll be quite a few of these um, lots of non-fiction which is hopefully exciting. I know that lots of people prefer fiction recommends um, but for me personally I just want to read more non-fiction. I will still read fiction obviously um, but I think I want to weight it kind of 50-50 as much as I can this year and then commit to that as a goal for next year. Um, yeah so hopefully I enjoy reading all of these. Hopefully you have heard of some of these and are interested or maybe have read some of them already but I'll chat to you guys again soon in my next video and look after yourselves. Until then, bye!